Hi folks, it's Roger Quinn here and here is yet another YouTube video demonstrating how to get a cartoon-like line effect in Illustrator with relative ease. Okay, it makes use of the new brush stroke effects and we're also going to have a look at the live paint effect which allows you to um, apply colors relatively quickly to a grouped object. Okay, so here is an example of uh, the type of graphic we're talking about, this little character here. Okay, it's all vector-based, but it started as a fairly standard illustrator drawing, which is the thing you can see above there. They are the exact lines that we used, and those ones I just drew using the pen tool. Okay, just like that. Okay, so when using pen tool, they typically will just draw uh, with a single line thickness on it, okay, which is the default. And the only difference is what I've done is I have used or I've applied from the brush libraries, okay, the brush library, artistic, and artistic ink. There's a whole bunch of different ones there. I use the ink category. You could experiment if you wish, but if you want this particular effect, it's these brush strokes that seem to work the best. And I've avoided the ones that actually look very brushy, and I've in fact just used these ones at the bottom here that are sort of tapered lines. And you simply just choose the line weight you want to apply, okay, which you can see there is applied to that line. And then varying the original line weight will change how thick or thin that appears. And you'll notice obviously that's making a fairly dramatic effect now uh, relative to the actual point weighting, but it still does affect the size of it. Okay, and then another aspect that will control what effect you're gonna get exactly to those brush strokes uh, is the profile of the line. So in the bottom of your stroke dialog box, Okay, you'll see uh, the default comes up as what they call uniform, okay, but you can actually change the profile. So I make a fair bit of use of that particular one, which is like that teardrop um, or tear shaped looking thing. Um, and I was also using this one at the bottom here, which is even more like a teardrop, okay. Uh, what you can see that that does is it changes the variation in line weight across the original line. The other nice thing is that I can also use this flip along aspect. Okay, so it's a little button right next to the profile and I can change where that's actually sort of putting the thickest part of the line. So what it's doing there is it's looking at either the start or the end of the line that I drew to then weight that line. Okay, and that is effectively how I did that whole uh, face there to apply the line effect. Now one thing that might be a little bit confusing is I did have a fill uh, put on that. Okay, so that's starting to perhaps resemble that a little bit more. Okay, uh, which of course I then applied color. So I will show you how to do that now. So, so it just saves a bit of time. I've actually made a weighted version of that already. Okay, so that's exactly what I just said. So if I just preview that in artwork mode, you can see it is the same thing. It's just got those line weights uh, applied. And then I'm just about ready to start applying uh, color to this. And you could just select it and fill it with, you know, the green color or whatever it is. In this case, I've used green. But so you get weird things like this going on where some of the objects are already partly filled, some of them aren't. Um, and so there's actually a slightly easier way to go about this, a more effective way anyway and it's using a thing called live paint, which we shall do. But just before I do that, you might notice too on this sample one at the bottom here, I've got little areas that are like indicating highlights and shadows and things. So just to show you a, a method for achieving that, uh, that you can use in this live paint effect, what I did was that I've come in and I've got my pen tool and I've just drawn a, a shape area just with a line in fact so it's not actually a whole shape it's just a single line so for example that one on the bottom of the face there that's indicating a cast shadow towards the bottom i've just drawn a single line and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to paint that with no fill and no stroke so that you don't at first see it at all 
and you might think, well, why are you doing that? Well, the reason for doing that is because in the next step, I'm going to be using that to automatically divide part of that fill for me so I can just easily select it as an area to fill with color. Okay, so anywhere else where you think you might want to do that on your drawing, it's not a bad idea. So you might notice I've got one, a little highlight on the nose there. So once again, just very quickly how that's done, just get my pen tool, draw a line that's roughly indicating the area that I'm going to want that to be. Now, one thing that is important is I am quite deliberately overlapping, uh, for example, the end of the nose there. I'm getting that second node of my line there to go right onto that point. Okay, and that's important because I'm going to need that line to divide this space for me. Okay, if it wasn't quite going to the line there, the so this automatic effect wouldn't quite work. Okay, so if you try this sort of thing on your own drawing and it's not quite working, that could be the reason. Anyway, um, we shall move along. And so the next step to get this to work is to select all of that graphic. Okay, so make sure all the lines are selected. So I just grab my uh, main selection tool and I've selected everything there. Okay, and then two step process here. The first step is to well, I always do this, I think it works better. I'm not sure that you have to do this, but I think it works better. To expand the appearance. Okay, now what that does is it will now take all of those line thicknesses, and if I just go to the artwork mode, you may see what it's done. And it's now automatically created an outline around my line thicknesses. So before, they were just a single line, as you can see. I just hit undo. And then when I say expand appearance, it's turning all those line weights into a shape. Okay, so that's the first step. And with that all still selected, okay, so if you deselect it, just click it again. Uh, go down to, in the object menu, the live paint option and choose make. And that defines that whole head now as what Illustrator would call a live paint object. And you once again might say, well, big deal, what does that mean? Well, what it means is you can now go and grab in your toolbar the live paint uh, paint can, which if I remember where it is, there it is. It may be sitting in your toolbar just underneath the Shape Builder tool. Okay, so it's over here. If you lose it completely, just hit K on the keyboard and it will bring up the live paint bucket. And then what it does, as you move that around your object, you'll start to see a whole bunch of different areas um, become visible. Okay, uh, as areas that it sees as being fillable. Okay, and whilst it may seem really, really complicated at first, okay, I'll just deselect that so it's a bit easier to see. Um, when I'm moving that around, the live paint tool is detecting all the different spots that can be painted. As I said, it seems complicated, but the nice thing about this is it means I can be really particular about where I want those colors to fill. And the other thing that's good about this, I'm going to go over to my um, swatches and just choose. I just clicked on three of the colors I want to play with. The main uh, color I'm going to paint this thing. Uh, there's a slightly darker color for my shadows and a slightly lighter color for my highlights. And because I've clicked on them, they now become available as easy to choose colors for my live paint bucket. And all I've got to do is hit my arrow keys and I can scroll through those to choose the color I want to fill. So I'm going to start by filling the main green color. I'm just going to click that pretty much on every fill part. Now, you do have to be a little bit careful with this as you go because as a live paint object, it will also now allow you to choose for example, I'll just click on the eyebrow there and it paints it green. We don't want that. So I'm going to leave that black and I'm just going to be careful not to click on that. Right, as I said, I'm sure you're getting the point of this. So and if there's little tiny bits that just doesn't want to select, just zoom up and it will see them. There we go. Little bits on the lip there that I didn't want to grab. Okay, now back to that whole point I was making about the shadow colors. Now all I've got to do is use my arrow keys or just go to the swatches and select the, the green. And anywhere I want my shadow color to appear, which was there. I'm also going to put it in just in the ears here. It kind of looks like a little cast shadow, uh, which just happily was achieved by an automatic line that was there because it saw that as a filled shape, so it left a division in there. Um, this bridge of the nose here, I'm just going to put this lighter color on. 
So that's selecting that and clicking, filling that all in. Okay, if you're being really, really efficient, you could go in and start to group some of those little bits together um, so that it's not subdividing. But anyway, yeah, I could keep clicking around forever there, but I think that's probably showing you the gist of how that was done. Okay, so that's it. Pretty straightforward. It really is a very quick method for doing what seems like complicated uh, I'll call them organic looking drawings because they're not mechanical looking things. If they're mechanical looking shapes, it's probably easier to do it uh, by using some of the standard uh, division tools and cutting tools and things. But in a case like this one, uh, it's the life paint plus the brush tools are not a bad way of achieving what looks like a hand rendered ink drawing. Okay, that's it. Uh, give it a go and see what you can do with it.